Oh my god. Oh my god. As of recording this video, it's like 5 a.m. for me. I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna go to bed, but then I realized, oh wait, The Mandalorian is out. I've gotta watch this. And then I saw it was an hour long, and I was like, well, damn, I'm gonna be up pretty freaking late watching The Mandalorian, but it's gonna be worth it, because I'm so excited for The Mandalorian. I don't know what to think. I, I'm gonna say this. I haven't been this excited over Star Wars in well over, like, 15 years. I cannot believe this was produced by Disney. Like, this came from Disney Star Wars. This episode of The Mandalorian. I, oh, I, I literally just finished watching this episode and I'm like, oh my god, I, I have to do something. I have to talk to someone or record a video or I, I don't even know. Wow. That like one hour intro like episode of season two. Oh my god. <laughs> there is so much going on. I, I don't even know what to think. Wow, I haven't been this excited over Star Wars in forever and it feels great. So I'm just gonna throw this out there now, like, I'm gonna talk about spoilers. So if you guys have not seen the episode, just know that I think the episode is amazing and you need to go watch it. I don't know why you clicked on this video. Go freaking watch it ASAP. I don't care what you're doing. Drop whatever it is. Go watch The Mandalorian. Now, with that little spoiler warning out of the way, holy freaking crap, guys. <laughs> I mean, the episode started off really freaking cool. I mean, it had that fight scene we saw in the trailer. There was like a, that arena where there's like the Gamorreans fighting and stuff. He had to get that information about where other Mandalorians were and stuff. And he found out that another Mandalorian was on Tatooine. And I th instantly thought, I was like, oh my god, Boba Fett. He's the only one that could be on Tatooine. And I was like, well... Are they really going to bring Boba Fett back from the dead? I mean, he did have a pretty scummy death, and I've always been wondering what happened with Boba Fett. And as soon as they announced Mandalorian was going to be a TV show, I instantly was like, well, what about Boba Fett? And, I mean, he gets to Tatooine, and you see that armor is on the deputy. And as soon as I saw that armor, I mean, you could barely see it because he was standing in, like, a shadow of the doorway. And I was like, that's, that's Boba Fett's armor. But as soon as he took off the helmet, I was like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I was super excited to see the armor, but I was pretty disappointed to see that it wasn't Boba Fett. I mean, that kind of sucked. But it was still cool to see that the armor was intact. I mean, it had a little bit of wear and tear on it and stuff. But it was really neat to see Boba Fett's armor, especially in comparison to Mando's armor. I thought that was really cool. You can really see how the uh, Boba Fett armor is kind of worn and outdated. It's not as new and fresh, and I mean, it's really been beat to crap. But the whole plot of the episode of, like, teaming up with the Tusken Raiders and going out and fighting this giant crate dragon. And I really like how uh, with the Mandalorian they dive into some stuff that we never really got to see in like the original movies. Like they're diving into stuff with the Tusken Raiders. That part's pretty neat. All we ever knew from the Tusken Raiders before was from like briefly in episode one and we saw them in episode four when you know they obviously attacked Luke. Uh, and we saw them a little bit in episode two and Anakin killed a bunch of them. But we haven't really gotten to see them up close and personal we don't really know how they interact and stuff so i really like in this episode that we got to see a little bit more of the tuscan raider side of things i think that was was pretty freaking cool and then just the whole giant freaking crate dragon thing was just so well done it was just a giant over-the-top fight tons of explosions freaking dragon comes out of the sand and just devours people it's shooting freaking poisonous acid all over the place i like that they didn't make it a pushover like it, i i was expecting it, the thing to just lay on top of the bombs and it would explode and the fight would be over right then and there but it wasn't i mean it kept on going and i mean that was a pretty cool fight i mean this whole episode was just jam-packed with just tons of cool stuff we get to see the boba fett armor we get to see this giant epic fight uh, we're going back to one of these iconic planets of tatooine 
I mean, th there's just so much to take in with this episode. But then at the very, very end, when he finally, like, defeats the dragon, he held up his part of the deal, and he collects that Boba Fett armor. I mean, that was the deal. If he helped kill the dragon, he got to, you know, take back that Mandalorian armor. And as he puts it on a speeder, and as he drives off, we see this figure just standing over the top of the mountain, and he turns around, and it's freaking Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, I've got so many questions now. I mean, we know for 100% fact, Boba Fett survived the Sarlacc Pit. That's freaking crazy. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I'm super excited, but at the same time, Star Wars really likes to take characters that the uh, fan base likes, and when they get killed off, they tend to bring those characters back later on. So uh, I'm a little torn here. I mean, yes, Boba Fett died in a pretty dumb way. And I mean, it's nice to see that he comes back, but at the same time, I'm kind of like 50-50. Like, I wish he would stay dead because, you know, that's kind of original. Like, just let characters freaking die. Stop bringing them back. But then the other half of me is like, oh my freaking God, Boba Fett's alive. This is insane. I've got a million questions, like, how the heck did he lose his armor? How the heck did he survive the Sarlacc Pit? What has he been doing on Tatooine this entire time? Why hasn't he decided to leave Tatooine at any point during all these years? There's, like, so much going on. How how has he lived alone? Is he, like, lived off in a hut or something by himself? Has, do the Sand People know he's alive? Why didn't he, like, go hunting for his armor before? Is he going to try to hunt down the Mandalorian and get his armor back? Is he going to get along with the Mandalorian if he meets up with him? Is there a backstory to Boba Fett and Jango Fett? Are they going to, like, retcon what George said originally about Jango Fett not being a Mandalorian? Are they going to say that, like, yes, technically he is a Mandalorian? Are they going to explain where Boba Fett originally got the armor from? Like, is there going to be some plot there? I mean, there's just so much going on now, and I was just blown away from this episode one of season two. I mean, I'm super stoked. Baby Yoda didn't really play that much of a part in this episode, surprisingly. He was just sort of there, and they, you know, they just put the camera on him, and he made a couple noises here and there. So Baby Yoda definitely wasn't really the focus of this episode, which I think they nailed it. Absolutely love this episode. Like I said, I haven't been this excited over anything Star Wars in like 15 years since like 2005 when I saw episode 3. I think this is awesome. They absolutely nailed it. I still cannot believe that this came out of Disney Star Wars. Like 7, 8, 9 feels like a freaking fan fiction and then The Mandalorian feels like what Star Wars, you know, should have been. <laughs> Uh, it's just so hard for me to believe that this exists in the same universe. Like, they nail everything perfectly in The Mandalorian. They they capture it so well. They have just the perfect amount of humor. They don't go over the top like they did with 7, 8, and 9 in the movies. Like, 7, 8, and 9, it felt like they were trying way too hard to appeal to the children. But when you look at The Mandalorian, it appeals to everybody. It's not like kids aren't attracted to The Mandalorian show. Uh, I don't know, just... John Favreau and Dave Filoni just completely blow it out of the water with The Mandalorian. They need to be put in charge of everything Star Wars going forward. Freaking just get rid of Ryan Johnson, get rid of Kathleen Kennedy. Going forward with the movies, oh my god, just let Dave Filoni take care of all the movies and John Favreau. Get Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson in that like trilogy he's supposed to do. Throw that all in the trash. Just... Give everything to Dave Filoni. That's what they need to do going forward. I thought this episode was great. That's just my first reactions on it. I, I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. My opinion might change on this episode once, like, things digest. Maybe once I wake up after going to bed, because I still haven't gone to bed yet. Uh, but first impressions, I thought it was pretty good. But that is going to do it for uh, this video, guys. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.